Destination Newry, it's the morning programme. Good morning, Newry and Morn in the world. And we're taking Banbridge to the world at the moment because the playwright Stuart Love is with me here in studio. You're most welcome, Stuart. Hi, thank you. And uh, we also have the director of Titanic Serenade, Leonard Anderson. You're most welcome as well. Good morning. And we're expecting Ian Davidson to come along presently, who's the chair. He's the kind of, he's the PR of yes, that's Banbridge right. Musical that's right. Society. We spoke about a month, six weeks ago. Yes, we did. What has the progress been since that? Well, uh, we've Leonard? been hard at it, uh, as you can imagine. It's been Mondays, Wednesdays, Sundays. Wow. It's, uh, it's hard work. I was saying to Stuart on the way up to t today that this is one of the few hobbies that these people have, that you have to work so hard. <laughs> indeed, you you indeed, really indeed, do. Indeed, you know, indeed, you indeed. sing, you dance, you act, and it's, all, it's hard graft. Yeah. I, I think we should ask Stuart, because it, uh, off the back of an earlier conversation, a very simple question, Stuart. What's it like being a playwright? It's smashing. <laughs> it really is. When you're sitting watching a play and the audience are gripped and listening very carefully and then suddenly there's a joke or it changes and the laugh, you know, it's marvellous just the, the ebbs and flows. Yeah. You know, it really is. And I sat last night absolutely lost watching the play. It was their, their uh, dress rehearsal, yeah. Dress yeah. rehearsal. And I, I hadn't seen it, you know, but this was... Yeah, the, but you loved And there it. they were all doing their best, and the enthusiasm was just yeah. billowing out from the stage. Andrew, was, t tighten that shot on the two, uh, our two guests, if you would, please. I'd be grateful. Uh, so, the, the, but I mean, you shouldn't have been a playwright because you were a, a, a professor of, Inga, of, 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 of of mathematics, almost. Yeah. yeah. And well, the two, mathematics and English, are not supposed to mingle. I don't know. Well, I, I, think, I always think that the, the teaching career was a good, responsible job, but that the playwright was, that was me being very selfish. Yeah. That was, a, you know, as I said, stayed with me all my life, yeah. and I'm, I'm as enthusiastic now as I was when I was yeah, 25. Yeah, of course, of course. And part of that enthusiasm was born of your early teaching career in one of the most colourful places on earth, I would suggest. It, it was in, in, in Sandy Road. Oh, yes. And Belfast mm. really was a colourful place in those days Just because it was, a, it was, you know, a major manufacturing uh, centre. And the, the Newton Arms Road, you saw big loads coming from Harland and Wolfe's, you know, big propellers and things yes, like that. Yes. And the, the girls yeah. coming down from, along the Newton Arms Road from the mills and people from the rope works. It yeah. was a marvellous, uh, busy place, entirely different from it now. And I, when I go into town, I look and say, my father, he worked at the docks at the Queen's Bridge, and, uh, the Queen's Quay there. And I say, you know, if he was coming across here now, he wouldn't recognise oh, the no, place. Indeed, it's indeed. a modern city now in comparison to what it was. Could you have been a player? It's an impossible question, but I'm asking it anyway. Could you have been a playwright in a dull place where you didn't have this colour, where you didn't have the rope works, where you didn't have the yard, where you didn't have the mills, where you didn't have all of that? No, it gives you a background. Yeah. And you see all sorts of things, all sorts of people, all sorts of events happening. And it is very interesting. And it's, it's something for a playwright to yeah. feed on. You know, I think of my... Uh, I, I don't use uh, relatives or, or aunts or uncles as models, but they're there in the background, you know, and suddenly you realise something in your head. Yes, that was so-and-so. You know, it's funny the way creation, the mind works mm. when you're actually creating something. Absolutely. You know, if you, but in the creation of this thing, your greatest enemy, dare I suggest, is the small voice inside your head that says, this is no good. Well, or does that happen? This particular play here. No, any play. Any, oh, when you go that to, happens you're, all the you're time. You're there, you're alone, you've got a blank canvas, what and you've you got do, to fill it. What you do is, some people can think in a logical way and have it dressed out and designed before the start. I don't. I start without, generally without knowing how, <laughs> except in this case, <laughs> the, the play would end. Yeah, and yeah. Have, you know, And the main thing is to get a play finished somewhere along the line, and you can always take bits out and fix it up yeah. as long as you've got you've got now the titanic was no problem it was a story it more or less wrote itself no but sure it might have been a problem because i dare i suggest to you that everything possible under the sun has been said 
done, written, played about the Titanic. That's now. I'm talking about 35 years ago ah. when there wasn't so much. Yeah. The, the main book at, you know, that I came across was uh, A Night to Remember by Walter Lord. Yes. Since then, there have been all sorts of, I mean, in the centenary there, there was display in Belfast, like dozens and dozens of books yes. that have been written since. So really, when I wrote it, I put in a, put in a lot of material about Belfast as an When did you write center. this? Sorry? But just Andrew, would you introduce, please bring uh, Ian in now. I don't mind you coming into shot to do oh. it. It's necessary. Ian Davidson is joining us from the Banbridge. Please have a seat, Ian. Come sit down. Andrew will equip you with a microphone. And there you are. This is the one and only Ian Davidson. <laughs> You're so welcome. <laughs> Good to see you. Andrew will sort you out. The joys of live television, lads, yeah, yeah. not But when did you write the Titanic Serenade, <coughs> Stuart? Uh, I wrote it there, uh, I think, right, just before Christmas. Well, before mm -hmm. Christmas, again, um, I come back to the other point I made to you. Everything under the sun had been said, done, written. How did you bring a freshness and a difference to it? Oh, to this one here? Yes, yes, yes. Well, basically, I took about a quarter of it out because yeah. I had to make room for the songs, for the yeah. music. Yeah. And that, that took... Uh, and. What happened then was, I'm afraid, no, I was going to say afraid, not, a, not afraid. Uh, it was uh, Leonard here, he put some of the bits back in uh -huh. because I'd taken them out, you know, not very willingly, not very, <laughs> you know, but to oblige. <laughs> and he read it and he said, no, I'll put that put back in, in, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it so, really yeah. was easy. So the done. drive within you to do this thing, what kind of songs were you going for? Uh, were, are the songs new songs? Are the old songs dressed up in a different way? How did you marry the text and the genius of this man with the music? Well, the text was there, and as he says, he t took a quarter out, I put some things back in. Yep. But I used them, I would say, as a bridge into the music, yes. as it were. And so we went for songs, Ronan, of the era. Yeah. And things, and surprising, the, the songs that we know today that were still very popular uh, in the 1910s, 1911. Yes. And if you listen to all the music on the Titanic, yeah. a lot of it is very familiar from yeah. shows, from, uh, from course, past shows, course, like Le Har and the Merry Widows yeah, and that yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. So we went for uh, music around the era, songs that, that uh, might have been well known. And then myself and the musical director, we actually wrote a couple of extra songs wow. ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and for example, Ian here gets, he plays Andrews, Ian gets to do one called Virtually Unsinkable. Wow. Not unsinkable, yeah, virtually unsinkable, virtually. which we do then with the men's chorus yeah, yeah. and the reporters. And the other one, a, a fine ring, the Titanic hasn't had a fine ring, a name like that. Yes. So uh, we wrote another one for Ismi yes. when, when they were talking about the conception of it. So it's, it's a marriage yeah. of new music, bits of new music, and music of the period. That sounds good to me. Which would suit the mood. Mm, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Ian, you're welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. Ian had the job of parking the car. That's what you have yes. to do. <laughs> so give me a line. Hit me with a line out of out of your role. And I'm I'm listening to you, and you're you're performing for me. Just let me hear the line. Something that'll take me into it a little bit. No ship is unsinkable. Man has not yet reached, and doubtless will ever reach, the state where he can defy the nature of, the elements of nature with impunity. But that's, uh, the, the, we don't speak here of a Belfast ship, sir. Well, I, 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 that, that's my best posh Cumber accent. <laughs> <laughs> How is it going? Well, you, you're, you're, you're selling the tickets and people are interested, and you know many. It's all going well for you, is it? It's going, going extremely well. Extremely well. well. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. We're having another run at it tonight. Mm, tonight. It's, it's a very technical show. Are you show. attending at this stage? The, the oh, yes. Well, well, I'll not be there tonight. I'll no. be there tomorrow mm -hmm. night. And I'll stay in, ba in Banbridge for the whole five days. And do you have a whistle you can blow when they're getting it wrong? Or does he yeah. not allow you that? <laughs> oh, no. I, I, <laughs> Who's I, got the final shout? I trusted my baby to him. Oh, well, I, I think it's I mean, I, he, last night he was saying, oh, Stuart, have you any suggestions? And ah. I said, no. no. It's mm. absolutely fine. Mm. And when I listened to him, talking to the actors, all sitting on the ground, listening to them. You know, uh, I was impressed because uh, yeah. they were all hanging in every word and yeah. taking in everything. And he was just going through all the things, mm. all the, the small, small minutiae, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which, were, you know, yeah. needed repaired. Yeah. Stuart, the, the writing of the work, have you a garret that you occupy, a shed in the mm -hmm. garden or the kitchen table? No, Where do you do it? Well, it, when the kids were small, I used to do it in the, in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, but I have a special room now. That, yeah. And I, I, I work 
tend to work early in the morning. What is uh, early when, when for you? Uh, half past five. Oh, that's not too uh, bad. Or, it, yeah, it's no, early enough. I, I go to bed in the afternoon, have a snooze. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I know I mean, this thing. I'm, I'm up at three every morning to uh -huh. do my work. Yeah. Well, so you I, feel very virtuous with the yeah, rest of the world. One, one you're virtuous. <laughs> two, uh, you're, uh, there's no one around to spoil your that's day. Right, that's right. You're in control of everything that's quietly out yeah. there in front of you. Yeah, yeah. But the, uh, the discipline involved in doing it, are you tempted to be drawn off to your golf or whatever else else you do uh, and that it's are you getting such pleasure from the knitting together of the the fabric of the, of the play and using the words uh, I when I'm writing a play I think of nothing else yeah uh, I've been working and suddenly the thoughts just come out of the sky yeah. or driving along and uh, oh, oh, a, a sentence comes into my head oh I'll use that yeah, and so on yeah. and then and then when you are writing a play sometimes I have sit down to work and two hours later I've got up and I look at what I've written and I said where did he come from that yeah. this person has come from yeah. the mess come from nowhere it really is a fascinating yeah. uh, thing very see, very as, uh, if, if you were delivering a master class now and you're well capable of doing it and I would be a willing pupil mm -hmm. there listening and oh. be I'd be saying to you it's one thing for me to sit down and write a script to read for television or a book that people will read uh, that's very much one-dimensional mm -hmm. but when it comes to you you, you, you're intellectually operating in many dimensions. Gosh. You're putting yourself into the position of half a dozen people at the one time. How do you manage that? It really is it's impressive. That when I was younger, I would maybe have been writing about somebody uh, in, in middle age or in old age, and when I was, even when I was doing it, I was saying, "Have I guessed right? Is that the way people behave?" Yeah. And then years later. When I am the age of the people I was writing about then, I look, sometimes I say, my goodness, I did really well that time. Uh, or sometimes I say, but I missed a bit there, uh, you know. Uh, it's, 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 that's why it's also interesting. There's a bubbling, dare I say this, a bubbling happiness to you. Oh, oh I love does it, this yeah. come out? Does this come out in your work? I would like to think so, Good. yeah. I mean, Good. the Titanic there now, 1,600 people perished. Yeah. Now, you had to bear that in mind. You yeah. had to approach the thing with an, a wee bit of integrity, yeah. Yeah. a bit of, of decency, course, of you know. Course, of course. And at the same time, there you couldn't be too serious. But at the same time, you wanted to put a lot of information across. Yeah. So yeah. at times, at the very beginning of the play, but half a dozen people come on and they tell the sto how they're Belfast people and they tell how they received news of the Titanic, yeah. how it yeah. affected them. Yeah. And the people know then they're in for a, you know, a lot of, to learn a lot about the Titanic. Yes. And then the play starts and there's, there's, you know, music and things like that. And then in the second act, there's a fancy ball scene. And these are all the aristocrats and the well-to-do people. And these uh, half a dozen ladies step forward at break, uh, during breaks in the music. And they tell how their, how their lives were affected by the wow. loss of the Titanic. Wow. She had got this, you know. So there's a pathos quite a there lot of with, the, yes. with the gavotte oh. and the pathos yeah. in the middle. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. Leonard, uh, remind the people where they get the tickets, where they come, when it's on, all the rest of it. Well, we start tomorrow night in the Ivey Cinema. Tomorrow night, Ivey Cinema, Banbridge. And at 7.30 start. 7.30. Tickets? Tickets are available at the box office. Box office in the Ivey. In the Ivey Cinema. In Banbridge. And Ian, can maybe tell us anything more about that? Any, any other details on Yes, on you, that? you can ring in and book them in advance if you want to. You can pay by credit card over the phone okay. also. And then there's a machine you can just go and put your card okay. in and it'll give you your tickets. So. Okay, I sense, and I've been around a few corners, but I sense we have something very special off the pen of Stuart Love uh, at this time. And I, 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 would, I believe that this is one not to be missed. Well, I hope so. We I wish you so. well. Thank you for Thank coming you in. Thank you very much, Ron. That's great. Stuart, God love Thank you. you. Go well. Take care. Yeah. Thank you, And Roman. there you go, Ian. <laughs> take care. Andrew, what we're going to do now, I will tell you if I may, yeah, there is a wonderful little piece there from Francis Quinn that you have standing by there. And I'll tell the people who Francis is and then we'll come to it. Uh, Frances, of course, is a storyteller. From uh, She lives in Armagh City. Uh, she 